All right, so now we're gonna talk about a little um, hair, daily care, um, I guess what we'd call uh, different things we can put in there. I like to use all these products, but in different situations. Um, the Pro Hair, I wanna use on a daily basis come summertime. What I wanna do is, after we talked about getting uh, all the dead hair out, um, this cattle is slicked haired. We're starting to go into the cooler. We're going into the summer season with warmer temperatures. We're gonna start rinsing them a couple times a day or on a regular basis. Once we rinse these cattle and we get them completely dry, um, actually we don't even want to, we might even be able to leave these a little damp and we'll apply the pro hair in there. Uh, we'll brush it in and then we'll allow the fans to get on them and dry completely and then we'll come back and we'll hit them with a blower again and we'll really work that hair. Uh, so I think that's one, one tool you can use during the summertime and I mean fall time, just however it's going to fit in your program, but that's a good example how to use it. Um, to get into ProCharge, uh, this is a little more aggressive product, I think. If you have some flaky skin or you're challenging some skin or you're having some challenges with skin issues, I think this is a product to go to. Um, if you want to have fast results, but you're going to have to be careful because if this does, uh, if you apply this a lot, it's going to heat up that animal. So you don't want to put this in there, then kick them out in the sun just because it's going to heat them up and it could potentially cause hair to come out. We get into Sherco, and I think this is very similar to Pro Hair. Um, does a lot of the same things. Now, I'm not gonna talk completely about this because I'm gonna restate a lot of that, what I said about the Pro Hair, but I think with a Sherco, um, you just gotta decide which one's gonna work best for your program. And like I said, you can get all these at NASCO. I think the they have all sorts of different options, but they, like I said, these are the ones I like to use on a regular basis. And we go back and what I like to do is talk about my two favorite combs when we're starting off. These are my two favorite combs. Um, when I talked about working hair after we put the product in, you know, I like to actually go ahead and just use this wide range brush and you know, you can Starting off, you might have to work the hair forward. You know, just gotta kinda play with the hair and see how it works best for you. But definitely wanna go forward at all times. We don't wanna go any other direction. Uh, eventually, you'll be able to work the hair up. And once the hair gets longer, I like to switch combs. I like to switch combs to this full tooth comb right here. I think that works great. It especially works good on these thinner haired animals or a little coarser type hair. Uh, if we get into like a steer that's got a lot of thick hair, we might use a skip tooth comb. Um, but I think right now, like a hair type like this, this brush works really good for this type of hair. All right, we're gonna go over the shedding comb. Uh, Sullivan's and Weaver make both uh, this product. It's a dual-sided product. Um, first, I wanna talk about the hair cycle of the calf. Uh, it's gonna be 90 to 120 days, so we wanna keep that in idea when we're talking about our target show. Um, so if your target shows state fair, you're going to want to back clock about 90 to 100 days, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, so we're going to get into it. Uh, this is about the time of year, it's what, April 5th, that you're going to start thinking about shedding your calves off and starting a new hair cycle. So uh, basically how I like to do it, I just want to go ahead and, and I'll first start with going this, well I should first state that this calf, um, it's got pretty good hair still, it's not dying so it's not going to pull out very good. But um, normally, uh, if it's been out in the sun, it's starting to warm out, these cattle are going to start shucking hair. So this comb's actually just going to pull the hair right out of the calf. Uh, like I said, this one's still got pretty good hair, so it's not a great example. But um, it is going to pull some of the hair off. And uh, basically, you want to keep doing this. Uh, you can see it falling off there. Um, but you want to keep doing this um, until this hair is no longer coming out. Uh, so then you'll go to the other side, do the same thing, and then you're done for the day. But you're not done for good. You want to do this, you know, two or three times a week until you're, you think you have no more hair left. Um, the other thing I want to hit on is you want to stay out of the quarters, the legs here, um, the belly line, and their tail head. Uh, we want to try to uh, savor as much hair in those areas as we find when we're trying to grow it in the summertime to be a little more challenging to do so. So I think that's kind of the run through on the comb. 
And uh, I think it's a good purchase and it's an underrated process that we need to do more of. We're going to talk about the rotor brush here next. Um, there's different types of brushes you can get to put on a, your cordless drill or just a regular drill you can plug in. Um, this one right here is a, it's got two different lengths, the bristles here. I really like that, it's not as aggressive. Um, the other reason I like to, or I want to talk about why I like to use the cordless drill, it's got a clutch in it. So when you start this up and you get into, you know, brushing your calf with it, I think it's important if you got a tail swinging and it swings into your, your, uh, your drill here, it's going to stop. So I mean, it's immediately going to stop for you. If you got a one without a clutch on it, it's going to keep turning and then you're going to have a mess. So I think it's very important to have one with a clutch on it. And then actually I'm going to go ahead and show you, uh, kind of by example here, we always want to take this brush and have it turning this way, um, this, this way I guess, and that way we're going up against the hair and it's going to pull that hair away from the skin or the hide. And we're actually going to go ahead and show you here. And what I did there is I like to go up and then I like to come back down. And the reason I like, I come, like to come back down is it relieves the pressure off some of that hair. And I don't want to go over it too many times. I think it can irritate skin. And I just think this is like a thing you want to do every, you know, so often. I don't want to do it on a regular basis. I'll do it, you know, two or three times a week. And we get to the back side, you're going to have to switch the direction of your drill so you can keep that hair going up. And I like to work all the way around the leg here. This way we get all angles. Um, that's what, how I like to do the front leg. Then we get into the back leg and it's the same concept. Uh, you want to keep in mind how you're going to be clipping these cattle or fitting these cattle or even just on a daily care basis on how you want to work the hair. And that's going to play true to how you want to use the rotor brush. So keeping it going forward, keeping it going up is all what you want to keep in mind here. We're still going the same direction. And we're going to switch the drill. And that's what, how we use the rotor brush.